Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. Today I am bringing you what I think are the best top 10 affordable aroids. Now not everybody has a ton of money to spend on these plants. They don't. It's not the norm to be able to go out and spend a couple of hundred dollars on a houseplant. Regardless of what the internet tries to make you believe, that is just not true. A lot of these plants are luxury items, but that does not mean that you can't get some really nice plants in more of a local store to you. Every single plant in this list is a plant that I would purchase, and some of them I'm actually thinking about purchasing when I get a house. So I tried to put a range of different things in this list. This list has colourful aroids, aroids that grow tall, aroids that are more compact, big plants, small plants. Hopefully there is something in this list that catches your eye. Now these are in no particular order because I don't think it's possible to really give these things an order, mainly because it's so subjective, really, right? What one person likes, another person doesn't, so. So the first plant that I think is an absolute classic to have in any Aroid collection has to be, come on, it has to be the Monstera Deliciosa small form. Occasionally known as Monstera Borzigiana, occasionally just known as simply Monstera, occasionally known as a Swiss cheese plant. That's really hard to say, Swiss cheese plant a little bit early this morning. To be clear, I am talking specifically about the small form version because there is a small form and a large form. I won't go into it too much, but basically there is a large form of this plant where the leaves can easily reach about three foot across. This one is not. This one is a little bit more compact and the leaves maybe get to be maybe almost a foot across. So still large, but just not, not serious. You can find these plants nearly anywhere though. Honestly, I'm pretty sure that in most countries now, the Monstera Deliciosa has more than often proven it Itself. You can find it nearly anywhere. You can find it in box stores. You can find it in garden centers. You can find it in plant shops. You can find them in different sizes. You can find mature ones on big poles. You can find them really small and little baby plants. You can find them nearly anywhere. And I think they're an absolutely classic plant to have if you want something that looks jungly. This is absolutely the one to do it for you. The only caveat with this plant is that at some point you will need a pole for it. Please do not try and be a hero and go without. It's not going to happen. These Monstera are essentially giant vines, and if they don't crawl up something, it's it's going to be a royal mess. It's not like a lot of other houseplants where you can either grow them vertically or just let them trail. This is not one of those things. You will need a pole. So if you find poles quite ugly, then maybe this isn't the one for you. But I probably have an alternative, so don't worry. The next plant I'd like to talk about today is often misidentified. It has some silly names, but the plant I'd like to talk about next is none other than the Raphidophora tetrasperma. Now this plant is sometimes known as mini monstera, monstera minima, anything to do with monstera. That ain't true. That's not what it's called. It's called Raphidophora tetrasperma. But if you do want to search for it online or anything like that, it may also fall under those names. It is the same plant, just really nobody should be calling it any form of monstera. I see why, but they shouldn't be doing that. That's naughty. Very naughty. Of course, it probably gets this misidentification because it does look monstera-ish, but smaller. So now I would say this plant is an amazing alternative to the previous plant, the Monstera Deliciosa, and that is honestly because you don't actually need a pole to grow this. Okay, you don't. So you can grow it upwards or up a pole and it will look great and everything will be cool. It'll be awesome. Or you can let this plant trail. And I will try and insert pictures of what the plant looks like when it trails, if I haven't already. It works. Okay, and I think I'm gonna buy one of these myself as it happens for my house. I think I'm going to let it trail. I'm not going to pull it because personally, I know poles are a necessary evil, but I don't like them. So I think with this one, it's smaller. It can get a bit more viney and a bit more traily and still look good. Whereas the previous plant, you can't do it with that. You really can't. So this one's a little bit more versatile. It still is tough, don't get me wrong. It's still a very tough plant, but it's, it's a little bit smaller and you can just do more with it, I think. So for that reason, if you don't like the idea of the first one and you have less space, try this one. Again, you can find that in nearly anywhere that sells houseplants. I don't particularly think that's a difficult plant to find for nearly everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean, you know, UK, Europe, America, etc. I think it's reasonably easy to find. Next up, adding a little bit of colour into our list, I had to pick for you the Philodendron Prince of Orange. Now, there was a period of time, I don't know when this was, they have always been in tissue culture, i.e. they have always been produced, mass produced via laboratories and things like that. They kind of had a lull at some point and they disappeared, but now I've noticed they are back full force in plant stores and they're not even that much money. The best thing about these is you can buy them as a full established plant, maybe like a foot tall, or you can actually buy them in just little ditty pots. So if you're a bit tighter on a budget, and you don't mind growing something out, it's another really, really great plant to have. What else is cool about it? 
clue is in the name, the Philodendron Prince of Orange comes in pretty orange. So if you like orange and you like autumnal colours or you just want to give your collection a little bit of pop but you don't want to break the bank, this one is a beautiful, beautiful houseplant. I really, really like these. I think I have one somewhere or maybe I put it on my wall. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I have one though. One good thing to note about this plant as well is it grows in a kind of rosette-like shape, which is really, really good. Again, if you don't like poles or you don't want to have something on a pole or you don't want something that climbs a lot and gets leggy and whatever and you have to support it, this is another really, really cute one. I feel like this plant would make a very good gift as well because I think if you get it for somebody that isn't into plants so much and they don't know about it, it's a bit of, it's got a bit of a wow factor, hasn't it really? So for that reason, I think this had to be on this list just to jazz it up a bit and put some colour in. Plus it is affordable. It's definitely affordable in the UK. I'm pretty sure it's affordable in America and also the EU as well. Well, I think they all come from the EU, so they're bound to have a lot there. Right, I had to put an alocasia submission in here, but I couldn't decide between two of them. So I put two in as one entry and I'm going to talk about them because one is a lot more available in the UK. In the US, I couldn't find one of them as easily. So I've picked another one, basically. My two submissions for alocasia are the alocasia zebrina, very beautiful plant, and the alocasia black velvet. Now the black velvet is an amazing plant and it's an easier alocasia than the zebrina. Okay, I'll say that right off the bat. I've got a, quite a bit of experience with these plants. The alocasia black velvet is a lot more succulent in nature, so if you're maybe not as on it with your watering and you're maybe more of an underwaterer, then that one is a good one to go for. It's also a lot more readily available in the US. I noticed I couldn't really find zebrinas that much in the US actually. They didn't seem quite as available, so I've put in the zebrina for the UK, even though the black velvet is also available, but I felt that the zebrina in the UK is it's almost a staple allocation now, and it's really, really nice. So to talk about the Zabrina really quickly, oh gosh, it's it's lovely. It essentially gets its name because the stems carry a zebra-like pattern, and the leaves are really sagittate, which means they are really, really arrow-shaped like this. I really can't do that very well. That's kind of the shape of the plant. Both really, really nice choices. The black velvet can take low light. The alocasia zebrina probably takes higher light. They are not the easiest of house plants on this list, though. I will warn you there. There are a lot of other plants, namely, well, anything on this list, that are a lot more easy than this one. So I think if you're a little bit worried and you've never dealt with alocasia before, definitely go for the black velvet. Maybe leave the zebrina for a little while until you get a little bit more used to how alocasia generally work. But both are great plants, both are very affordable, or at least they seem to be, and they've stood the test of time. That's why they're being mass produced, right? The next plant I'd like to talk about is a pretty staple anthurium for anybody's collection. Anyone that wants something that looks really exotic and rare without too much of a price tag. This is your boy. It's always been your boy. It's probably always going to be your boy. What am I talking about? A lot of you may know already, but it's the anthurium clarinervium. Now, honestly, this plant is awesome and I'm so pleased it's being mass produced because let me tell you, for a velvety anthurium, it is tough as nails. It's absolutely wonderful. It can take being underwatered to a ridiculous degree, to be quite honest with you. It shocks me how much they can deal with underwatering. They might be a little bit easier to find in Europe than the US. I will say that straight away. I couldn't find them as much in the US. That's not to say they're not available. It's just they seem to be a lot more available around basically where I'm from. But if it is slightly more expensive in the US, I do advise you to go for it for your first anthurium because honestly, I don't think it's going to let you down because if you can't look after that, it's not so much of a bad thing. You haven't wasted a ton of money on a really bougie anthurium. But the best part is it does look like a really bougie anthurium. So you do get the best of both worlds. I really, really love these plants and I could not make this list without putting that plant on. Continuing on with one of my favourite trailing philodendron of all time, like nothing really beats this one. This is the philodendron micans, and oh my goodness, what's not to love, honestly. Now there are a ton of trailing plants out there, I totally get it, there's green ones, there's lime green ones, there's ones with variegation on, there's ones with silver on, but I chose this one because it's quite dark and it's quite luxurious, and I think it provides a really nice contrast, so I tried to pick something that's a little bit unusual. Obviously as well, it's very affordable, and I noticed it is around 
pretty much everywhere. So you can pick it up in the UK, no problem. You can pick it up all across Europe. You can pick it up in the US. I'm pretty sure you can pick it up nearly anywhere. It is not a rare plant by any means, but it looks like one. It looks really, really beautiful. They're very, very easy care. I would argue they're borderline tough as nails. They're really good to propagate if you want to essentially give your plant a haircut, which they really don't mind at all, by the way, and maybe propagate some vines, stick it back in, and then make a really bushy plant. If you buy a small one, you only really need to buy the one, right? Because you can just keep thickening it up and making a bigger plant. It's a really, really nice plant for that. A lot of hanging plants are, don't get me wrong, but the Mykins has to win it based on how sexy and dark it is because it's really, really nice. Right, this next one is a little bit of a new plant for me, although I've seen them kicking around for years, and honestly, I probably haven't given them enough of a commendation because they have to be tough as nails to be produced in this volume and this many variations, honestly. So I had to mention it because they are very, very nice plants. So the next plant I'd like to talk about is none other than the Anthurium livium. Now, I think that's what it's called. Sorry if it's wrong, but essentially, it is a type of Anthurium that is extremely glossy and has extremely extremely, extremely glossy flowers. But the best thing about this plant is, guys, you can get it in a million different colors. And I mean a million different colors. I think it's also known as the flamingo plant. I don't know if that refers to a specific color or just the plant itself, but Anthurium livium comes in so many different colors. Now you can get pink flowers. I think you can get blue flowers. You can get black flowers. You can get white flowers. You can get nearly anything. But the one that I wanted to put in this video, what was it called? Yes, the one I saw and I actually thought, hey, that's a bit unusual. I quite like that one, is the rainbow champion, which I will be showing you here and I just thought that was a little bit different so if you want to try anthurium but you don't want a velvety one absolutely this is the one for you I think this is another really good house plant to have for a gift as well because they are tough as nails they've been around for years you see them in things like hotels dentists office stuff like that when you see a plant in those kind of places you know they're tough right you know that they're reasonably easy you know that they're probably quite affordable and just a good shout so for that reason I had to put that in there but I'd like to see this plant here the rainbow champion in real life because i might get it i know i might get it i definitely want a raffidophora that i mentioned earlier but i'm i'm kind of thinking about it Okay, the next plant on this list, I actually had to choose about three of them because I couldn't really decide what I liked more. And honestly, it depends on what you prefer as to which one you prefer. But I had to mention it because it's a really nice, affordable aroid and they look really good. They don't need a pull and they grow quite bushy, which is a big plus. So we have next up the Diffenbachia. And I picked three versions for you. What did I pick? I picked the Diffenbachia Reflector. Unbelievable plant. Unbelievable plant. We'll come back to it. I picked the Green Magic and I picked the Compactor. And I actually, as of recording this, I can't remember what the Compactor looks like, but obviously you'll be seeing a photograph now. These plants are just great if you just want something bushy. So a little bit like the Philodendron Prince of Orange, but maybe you're not keen on the orange or the, the waxiness or anything like that. Maybe you want something a little bit more muted, a bit more velvety, a little bit more contrasted, but on the green end of the fence rather than colourful. Different back here are a great, great plant. So the reflector is probably one of my favourites. I just think they're amazing. And they really do look this good in real life, by the way. This isn't any camera trickery. If you've seen a different back here reflector in real life, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. They just look insanely good. They're absolutely amazing. I think I launched my shop a couple of years ago with these in. I love them so much. Honestly, they're brilliant, brilliant plants. It's great to see that they're now being mass produced. Now, I don't actually know to what extent each different back here is available in each country. The green magic, which is another favourite of mine, honestly. I think that Green Magic was available nearly anywhere, but the Diffenbachia Reflector might be a little bit harder to find. I don't think it's going to kill you trying to find it. I think you'll be able to. All three of these plants are a really great option if you just want something a bit different but bushy. I'm trying to avoid pools as much as I can because I feel like that's not as novice. Unless it's a Monstera, then I think we need to avoid pools a little bit. Lovely, lovely plants. Honestly, lovely, lovely plants. They can get a bit thirsty, but they can dry up as well but it's best to keep on them a little bit more with watering, I think. This next entry is all about Syngonium. And I wrote down a couple again because generally in different places there are different Syngoniums available, but they're all equally awesome and I will explain why. But I wrote down the Syngonium Pixie, if you really want a small plant, it's quite small. The Neon Robusta, which is a pinky one. And the White Butterfly, which is one of my favorites, actually. I really like that plant. Syngonium are brilliant if you want to learn how to propagate a plant 
plant, they are excellent for it. They're good if you want to learn how to pull a plant, they're excellent for that. They're also really good if you want to be able to prune a plant back and keep it like a little bush. Syngonium are fantastic for that. Now, in regards to the fact that they are a vining house plant, all of them pretty much, they can grow upwards and they can grow downwards. You will have more success growing them upwards, i.e. on a pole, than you will letting them trail. Now they can trail and become a vine. I find some of them do it more easily than others. But if you want to keep something small and you want to prune it, you enjoy that kind of thing, Syngonium are great for that. I think they've got a great shape. You can get a ton of different colours. This is only just three Syngonium that I'm mentioning in this list. Honestly, they are fantastic. If you want to add a pop to your collection, great plant. Absolutely great plant. So easy to care for, especially if you get one from a garden centre. Honestly, you cannot go wrong. I promise you, you cannot go wrong. If you have any problems, just stick them in water. They're fine. They could pretty much grow in water forever, as long as you gave them some feed, to be quite honest. You don't even have to have soil for these guys. These guys are absolutely unbelievable. The last plant I want to talk about today is possibly one of the best in this list, because quite honestly, you could spend virtually no money and be able to grow a plant because they sell them as bulbs and they have great colours. What am I talking about? Some of you may know. I'm talking about Caladium, guys. Caladium are incredible. I'm going to put some pictures of some different Caladium on the screen screen, but you can get these from a plant form. More commonly than not though, you can buy them from a bulb. So you can spend hardly any money buying a bulb. Honestly, the colours you can get are just breathtaking. Now I used to have one of these and I do want it back or something similar to it. I used to have a Caladium White Queen. Unbelievable plant. It was just an unbelievable plant. I really, really want one of those back. So I think I'm going to buy some bulbs. Unless I can find the plant in full, I'm going to buy some bulbs and I'm going to grow them out. So I really suggest Caladium. Not only that, but the bulbs will likely multiply and you'll be able to get more plants out of it. The leaves can be very, very flimsy and honestly, I would say that they were a plant that needs a little bit more warmth and a little bit more humidity. But if you want to dabble with that, if you want to dabble with raising the humidity in your house and seeing if, you know, it sounds really weird, but seeing if your house can cope with the humidity, because a lot of people tell me that theirs can't and you get maybe damp or stuff like that, get something like this. See if you can grow it. If not, no love lost, you've spent a minimal amount of money, you haven't bought a super rare plant that needs loads of humidity and then you've decided, oh my god, I can't take care of it or anything like that. Caladium are unbelievable. Oh my god, the colours you can get. The colours you can get. Some of the rare ones as well look really good. So if you want to dip your toe into Caladium, I think now is an absolutely great time, especially since it's spring as well. You can get them planted really quick. Now you can obviously grow them outdoors, but it kind of depends where you are in the world. I don't know if we can do it here in the UK or maybe even the EU. I don't know. But in the US and, you know, Florida or wherever, somewhere warmer, then I'm pretty sure you could. You just bring them in in winter, you overwinter them, you store them, and then you can pop them back out next year. So it's potentially a great Great, great, great investment. And it will definitely be a showstopper, pretty much no matter which one you pick, because I think most of them are pretty awesome on colour. And that was my top 10 affordable Aroids. Arguably my favourites, but ones I think would benefit any collection. Now listen, you don't have to spend a ton of money on Aroids to get a pretty collection. You just don't. I'd like to think this video is case in point, because every single plant in this video, if it was in a collection, I think it would look great, and I think it would look super unique. And the best part is, with things like Caladium, a lot of the allocation, a lot of the different back here, stuff like that, you can really Really make it your own because there are so many options out there. Syngonium as well. So I've tried to make this video something you can really kind of play with. If you're just dipping your toe into Aroids and you think, I don't even know what's available. I don't know what's easy, what's difficult. The best tip I can give you guys is to go to garden centers because the stuff in garden centers, I guarantee you, will be reasonably easy. You're not going to get caught out too much with things like that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video today. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It really, really helps. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job and I'm making content that you enjoy. If you like this video even more, however, I would really love it if you could subscribe because even still, 50% of the people that watch my videos each week are subscribed. If you subscribe, honestly, it really, really helps me out. It helps me grow on YouTube. It does me good favours in the good old algorithm and I would love to have you as part of the ever-growing family. Anyway, that's enough from me. I hope you enjoy your weekend and I hope you take something interesting from this video. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!